Okay, according to my list, that's pretty much everything. So there's your front coil over, the end link, nice poly bushings, painted control arm and radius rod, and of course the front. You've seen it all. We just did it. You just watched it on film. So according to my list, that's everything. So I guess at this point, I'm going to clean off those rotors with some brake clean, put these wheels back on, and uh, drop this thing down and start checking out the uh, height adjustment and getting this thing to factory ride height. All right, so I've got these. I'm not, they're not final torqued or anything, but the, the, the wheels are on and they're tightened enough to just to check ride height. So I've got the jack under the front. I've got the jack stands pulled out. Let's see what this thing looks like when I drop it down. Uh, I have a feeling it's going to be ridiculously too low, given that that's what it looks like right now with the wheels just hanging in the air. So this might be funny. Thirteen and five eighths. So as of right now, we we are at three hundred and forty six millimeters. So that's definitely lower than I want to go, but I guess it's fine for now. All right, now let's see how the rear looks. Let me drop it down. A little under 14 and a quarter, which is 361.95. So, I don't know. Alright, I just took this thing for a spin, went over some bumps, swerved a lot, tried to do some things to make the suspension settle, and this is where we're at right now. So, uh, somewhere on the screen, I'll put all the heights at each corner what they were after the suspension settled a little bit and then uh, what I'm gonna do right now is go to each corner individually and adjust it to where I want to start with so I'm thinking I'm just gonna go with like a 10 millimeter drop from factory for now so let's get to it what I did was is just to have a little bit of reference is I marked that something like that just roughly so that i know when it comes back around that that's a one full turn all right so here we are on the front right corner we're up in the air get the wheel off and so when i put this ruler up against the bottom of this top locking collar and i measure to the base the top of this base here it's 53 millimeter and with the ride height being 333 Basically what I did on the other side was is I raised this up until it was 65, which should bring us up to, thir four, uh, what is it, 345 millimeter. And I, I'm assuming that's the case. I don't want to be at 345. What I'm going to try at first is 350, but I don't know if this is a direct translation to ride height. Like, I don't know if there's some kind of flex in the system. It should be. this When I bring this up to 65, that should bring us up to 345 for the fronts, but... I'm just going to take it little by little. I don't want to overshoot it and go to where I want to be and it turns out that there's some kind of discrepancy with where you adjust this and where you end up. So that's what I'm going to do. And I also noticed that every time I bring my, my uh, Sharpie mark here around one full turn that that's two millimeter. So yeah. Let's break this loose. Start unscrewing this from the base. Let's 
So that should be 65. Wish I could stop bumping the tripod. Apparently I can't. Yep. Actually, it's a little bit... I'm going to keep going. That must, be, that must explain why these are different. Or were... All right, a little bit more. Okay. All right. So. All right. So let's uh, go ahead and do the rears. And then we'll put the wheels back on, drop it down, and take it for a spin, and then check it again. Alright, so the rear is a little bit different. This is much more of an indirect link between the adjustment and, you know, because this is kind of like halfway between on the, between the fulcrum point and the end point of the hub. So I'm not really sure how to proceed on this. So what I did on the other side, the other side was at 338 millimeters, and so... Just as a shot in the dark guess, I did three turns of the lower locking collar. And then I read in a forum post and just verified for myself that for every one turn of the spring, you do three turns on the shock. So I did three turns down on the spring to basically make it, you know, taller, raise it. And then nine turns of the shock. And so on this side, we are at 348. So, I don't know, I guess I'm just going to do two turns up, raise this by two turns of the locking collar, and then six turns on the shock, and uh, that'll be that. So, and, and then just see where we're at and go from there. Another thing that's kind of crappy is, is nothing stops that upper perch from turning. So you can't just, you can't just break these two loose and then start cranking on this bottom one because the whole thing will turn. Maybe it wouldn't be like that if you were lowering it, but, so... What I found that I have to do is I have to break this shock loose so that I can pull this whole thing down and uh, basically loosen this whole assembly so that I can turn that easier. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and mark this, I guess, just so I know. And, well, the thing is, though, is I'm going to have to make sure that the upper perch doesn't turn along with that. So that's unfortunate. But So... I'm also, uh, I think you can see that, I'm also going to bust loose this locking collar real quick while this shock is still bolted in, which it wasn't even very tight, unfortunately. So there's that. God, this stove is hotter than shit. Uh, let's see, I need to, oh, well, obviously that's the wrong one. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this shock bolt out, which is a 21 millimeter, if I'm not mistaken. Just so I can lower this whole thing. Yeah, that helped. Alright, I'm just going to drop this whole thing down. Let's just stop there. All right. There's one turn. Now I'm holding the perch to stop it from turning. And I can just turn this collar by hand. And then... that's back around so that's two full turns there and then on this one two 
three, four, five, six. All right. Put this bolt back in, I think. Yeah. Don't know why that won't ever turn out easily, but. I don't like that. Okay. Sooner. Okay, there it is. Okay. All right. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna torque the lower shock bolt or really lock these down to each other or any of that until we put the wheel back on and take this thing for a spin and see where we're at. So um, let's see what two full turns of this does for the ride height. All right. Here's what we're looking at at this point on the ride heights. So. I don't know if anyone noticed when I put those numbers up on the screen there that the rear left was way lower than the rear right despite being set identically on the spring perches. And so I couldn't really figure out what was up with that. I was asking about it on the forum and doing some research and whatnot. And then I looked at my notes and before I even started this project it was the same way. The rear left was way lower than the rear right. Like, you know, what's going on here? So it finally occurred to me that maybe the floor was out of level there. So I pulled the car out of that spot, because every time I had measured the ride heights at the four corners, it was parked in the same spot. So I pulled it out, put a straight edge on the slab right there in that spot, and sure enough, there's a huge hump in the floor right there where the rear left was. So given that information, I went ahead and equaled up both sides on the spring perches. And so after driving it around and parking it on various surfaces it's it's the way it's supposed to be they seem to be equal from left to right so that's good and then at some point i might go ahead and raise that rear up a little bit more but i'm pretty happy with this so one of these days when it's parked on a good flat surface like at a parking lot or something i'll go ahead and measure all four and see where i'm at exactly but i'm pretty happy with this so that's uh that's setting the right height